is up guys Warlux will back here and today I did my first stream back over on twitch yeah so if you guys didn't know I am now streaming on twitch go go follow me there you know I'm gonna I'm gonna have to plug this like every single day uh, because you know always be plugging all that shit also guess I want to stream with more people so yeah if you guys see this just go just come chill you know this will be a stream later today come chill um but yeah anyways today since i was going back to twitch i decided to play the deck that got me into playing wild and that's dead man's head um i know i've done dead man's head not too long ago i don't really know what else the decks to play um so if you guys have any suggestions leave them below and yeah uh, i'll think about playing them um tomorrow though i am going to be trying out the new classic game mode um yeah but unless people really want to see some more wild content, I do kind of want to see what the new classic con uh, the classic game mode is like. So I might do some wild and some classic. Uh, we'll see. But uh, yeah, just make sure to come by and check. I guess it's actually today. Yeah, today. The today stream. Whatever. The one that's going to be at roughly 12.30 tomorrow. Or today. I don't even know what fucking how times work. Past midnight tonight when this video goes up yeah <laughs> anyways uh with that being said i don't want to talk about too much about the games because i think they were still some pretty good games so let's just hop right into the first game i guess i'll see y'all there it's just a priest it has to be priest every time it had to be priest um Minefield plus Acolyte is really nice. Especially on Curve, right? Because you can slam Acolyte into Minefield to draw three. Super good. With this hand, we're actually looking for a very, very early Dead Man's Hand. Because the earlier we're able to put this into our deck, the earlier we're able to slam our first ones off to finally develop board. Because this deck really, at least how I have it built, you're really trying to control super, super hard in the early game. To in to be able to just slam a Nazoth as fast as possible to use that to stabilize and to gain health off your cartoons, obviously. Also, this is Rasa, this is matchup is much harder. Um yeah. I don't want to take damage quite yet, so that's why I'm hero powering here. Uh, I also want to have as much health as possible in this matchup because Oh shit, the shoe powered shield got buffed, huh? Interesting, I kind of forgot about that. Uh, he might do this trade, he might not. I mean, if he has pain, he most likely sends pain here. But, hey. Well, he didn't have pain. So, optimally, this is like 2-2-1. Two, two, um, this way I draw 3 cards off this. And then I can trade into that. Right. Or, I guess, two cards off of it, and then trade into it to draw the last one. Okay, so even if I draw... That was worst case scenario. Um, next turn I'm at 9 cards in hand. So I theoretically could burn 1 card by going Brand, Coin, Cold Light Oracle to burn him hopefully 3 cards. I think in that scenario it's worth it. Especially if I hit Dead Man's Hand as my draw for turn. It is so worth it. Especially if this draws some cards. Oh, he's going to play the Rafam here. Or the Kazakus. So it's actually burning 4 cards? Oh my god. Burning a Raza Priest 4 cards is like game winning. They have so many combo pieces left in his deck. He still has Raza, Anduin, Spawn, possibly Penfinger, Penfinger and Poss- I mean, possibly Spawn, possibly Penfinger. The, all the other ones he slammed on curve there. I think I just go for it, actually. I burn one card, and I think that's fine. Okay, well, there's the Penflinger. Raza? Okay, I'll take the Lorekeeper burn. 
Um, it's not the best burn. It's not the worst burn. It's just a good burn overall. The worst card to burn here is Dead Man's Hand. Second worst card to burn is Cold Light. Third worst card is Cargan. In that order. So I want to keep those three cards most importantly because they gain me so much armor. I mean, it's not that they gain me so much armor. It's just that the value gained from them is insane. Power off is fine. Um, should you dust those? Honestly, I would say no. I, I really, really hate dusting cards. Um, just because I feel like when you dust cards, you lose potential value. Well, more than just the potential value, right? The, the value you get from them is so low. Alright, he has to play another card here. So dusting a card, you get a quarter of its value. Also, it's always nice to keep... Um, I thought they already have... I mean, they still need to get Raza then, right? It's also because, like, if they do become playable in the future, Elise being one of them that could become playable, um, you're really sad, right? I should have possibly threw my Armorsmith into the ring there, but... I should have actually slammed this. Uh, no, this is just slightly better here. Fuck, still no Raza burn or Anduin burn. Or Spawn burn. Raza? It also really sucks that he hit Polly on this. If he, if he hits Polly on it again, I kind of just lose the game. There's the Anduin. I would have loved to slam this here, but I sadly couldn't. If he has, um, if he has Anduin here, he has Anduin here. At least I burnt the spawn. I don't know, actually, all of his early units left in his deck. Uh, I'm in such a bad spot. <laughs> I'm in actually such a terrible spot. We're actually even on cards drawn, which is kind of surprising, because I feel like I drew I drew three off my Acolyte. He's forcing the Rustwick, or the Risky. Or just that. I fucked up, I kind of just threw that away. But I was going to do this anyways, most likely here. Uh, I mean, I'll take that. That's a fairly good burn again. Still no Raza burn, or Anduin burn. Or Raza burn, fucking. I can't even speak English. Uh, Just slam the Raza. Just slam it. I want to cry myself to sleep. Again, Dead Man's Hand is such an important card to draw here. So I play this here. Again, hope this is not 10 cost mass poly. Or like Psychic Scream. Or... Actually, Psychic Scream is fine as they get back Cold Light. And Cold Light's a real. Okay, never mind. That's what I was about to say. Cold Light is a really good win con in this matchup. Cold Light's a good win con in most matchups, actually. I actually got a question asking why I play Brand in my deck. Um. I guess not a lot of people play Bran in this deck anymore. Um, it's just because it's such a good add-on to the various combos you play that I feel like it's kind of important uh, to play. He can't go off this turn, 
unless he has like a whole bunch of one cost spells that now cause zero bits of pawn readings and then he top decks uh, Raza. Wait, top decked Raza here. So I want to exactly hit Dead Man's Hand here, so I'm not to slam Bulwark. If I can get to a point where every single turn I just have to play a Bulwark and Dead Man's Hand, I win the game, by the way. It's very, very hard for them to play like 10 cards to deal damage in one turn. Uh, okay. So, not the card I wanted. I need to start weeding out my hand is the real thing. Weeding out my hand here is super important. Um, just because if I have too many cards in hand, uh, Dead Man's Hand becomes even worse. This is going to be huge here, though. I actually ginormous. I have so much armor, it might be a little bit hard for him to actually break through it all efficiently. Which means if I draw Cargath, that's another 10 health. That's good for me. It's actually really good, because now I'm guaranteed to have one in my Deadpool. And he's playing cheap spells without having, um, what's his face out? Draws me one card, which kind of sucks. Hmm. I mean, Dead Man's Hand is a 1 in 4 draw. Of course, the last card in his deck is a spell. That's so lucky for him that the last card in his deck was actually a spell. I'm actually kind of afraid that he's playing like a Alex Straza version and not necessarily just the combo version. Because Alex Straza would be so much harder to deal with, actually. Actually, so much harder to deal with. That's really good for me. Okay. Please hit his guy twice. Or three times. Oh my god, unlucky. Lost a 50-50. But 50-50 is actually super important to hit too. Feels bad. The reason that 50-50 that is super important, because now I lose one free tick of uh, Bulwark here. Versus if it hit his guy three times... Um, he had to spend two extra, or he had to steal two damage instead of one off that, which would have helped a lot, because it would have actually saved four health roughly. All uh, right, this hero power spawn trigger. Yeah, it saved. No, it saved two health. Okay, never mind. See that play there tells kind of tells me he doesn't have spawn or he's not holding spawn. He dealt two damage there. If he continues to deal two damage a turn, uh, I'll eventually win. This will eventually have to play a minion. Actually, he did zero theoretically, because of uh, shield. Uh, I'm just gonna punch him in the face with this because he's slowly dying to fatigue. And he can't kill me in one turn with uh, spawn either at this low health. Even at 20 health, it's really, really hard to kill someone OTK with spawn. Especially when they're at 30 or 60 health almost. He's almost forced to play Reno here. Or so he just assumes I'm not playing combo. So he's playing Reno here 100% of the time. That's a fact. Or else he just dies. It's, there's no way he's able to deal this much damage to me in one turn. That's hero power, Reno, hero power. And then he's going to be at 19? Yeah, he'll be at 19 next turn. And I'm going to be at 30. Or 60, roughly. Uh, only better card I can draw would be Argus. 
Ooh, that's actually a really good card here. He still has the combo, so he thinks he can win. I personally don't think that to be true, but... Yeah, so the thing is, I guess he still has Seance, so he can still Seance Reno. Which is a little obnoxious, but that still gives me more time to draw cargo. There's no way that kills me. Without killing himself first. There is absolutely no way I died to that. I have two t I have three times his health. Ah, so it's a way to concede. I see. Yeah, this deck, if the Raza Priest has a slow enough draw, even our draw there was pretty slow. Um, if they have a slow enough draw, they instantly lose this matchup. It's it's not even close. That's why this deck is so good. I actually fucking love this deck. This was the deck that got me back into playing wild. So I figured, first stream back on Twitch, I might as well play the original deck that got me into wild. It just felt... It felt correct, if that makes sense. Uh... My guess is this is Secret Mage, so... That's not good, actually. Ooh. Okay, well, there's a Cartoot. Cartoot is always a good minion in this deck, in my opinion. You gain plus one health net of expl of um, yeah, explosive runes. So it's like, I think it's fairly good. Fairly good. Uh, I still hate the fact I can't have music on stream. Like, actually... It's one of the things that tells me the most. Hmm. Is Minefield correct here? What in here is darker than normal? I don't think it's a good way to deal with this. Um. Jesus Christ. Uh. That's very aggressive, in my opinion. I'm expecting him to do this hit and then my face. I'm not expecting either of these to die. So, it allows me to do this to draw a shitload of cards next turn. Which is the, which is the plan here. By the way, does everything I want... I mean, it's a little bit late to be uh, asking this, but everything sounds good, right? Um, just in general. I don't know if it would sound different on Twitch versus on YouTube, but just in case it does, I hope it sounds good. Uh, well, there's Nazar. Always an interesting card to draw. Second Risky Skipper. This is the slowest secret mage draw I think I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> uh, emotes, I like the fact that there's emotes on chat. It adds color. Although one of the weird things that comes from streaming from YouTube to Twitch, on YouTube everybody has their, their little icon in the chat window, where in Twitch they don't. So it's just like the name. So it, it looks different. And I don't know how I feel about that. I think this is the most amount of health I've ever had against a secret mage on turn 5. 45? Feels uh, pretty damn good, man. This is, again, the slowest start I think I've ever seen a secret mage have. You think he would have slammed those cards earlier? 
Not explosive ruins one time. Oh, okay. There was two things I was terrified of. This being explosive ruins and then this being uh, rigged fair games. Either or would have been really fucking bad. Also, by the way, this is good but awful at the same time. And I know it sounds weird to say, but it's awful because now this card's no longer active. That's actually super, super bad for me. So I'm going to have to throw away without drawing any cards. He trades trades here. Right. He doesn't trade trade. I mean, I'm in a fine position. But I don't see in any world where he doesn't do the trade trade. Actually, Kargath here is a really solid play. Red Whiskers is not bad. So you gave me four, I'm gonna take four, so it does absolutely nothing here. Uh, I'm at this weird thing where I just have nothing in hand. Okay. Um. Hmm. I can't tell right now what's a good and what's a bad draw. It's kind of weird. Um, I want to say if I top deck Barov, I just slam Barov here every time. But I don't know if that's correct. Like, I feel like it must be. All these cards are so fucking... The worst sequence of draws possible. Do I, I think I'd rather get this countered. I guess here we just play for a 4 4 to survive. If I had two more mana, I'd slam this here to proc the explosive runes. I gained two net. Fine. Yeah, that sucks, but what can you do? We are getting to a point where, like, the rest of his deck now is fireballs and rigged fair game. And, uh, secrets, so. My guess here is Flame Ward, um, Explosive Runes. Hmm. It's good for me, weirdly enough. So that has to be Counterspell or Rigged. It was really counterspell. I was hoping it wasn't going to be counterspell. I was hoping just to get a free draw three here. Because it would have been so fucking good, actually. Drawing three here. Because the card like Scourge Lord Garrosh on this board is insane. If I would have top decked Scourge Lord Garrosh, I think I just won. Because I cleared his board there for free. Actually, no. He did have the two one. Well, I killed the Cloud Prince, which is very important. Oh, nice. He gave me a free card. There's the scientist. Well, I guess he just wants to draw his entire fucking deck. That's no master. This is one of those weird matchups where I don't need Nizoth to actually win the game. So it's possible that I just slam Nizoth here on curve. My game plan to win the game is called Light Oracle here. Or a later Oracle mixed with Cargoth Prime. But even then, I won't get to a point where I need a Dead Man's End. I know he has one more rigged fair games, so as soon as he plays it, I'm free to slam Cold Light. If he plays the secret here, uh he fucks up. <laughs> I know he still has rigged explosive runes left. He's slamming both of them to kill my guy. Interesting, so he has the other one here too. Because I don't want to deal damage to him, but I do want to draw like Barov or Brawl. Barov, Brawl. 
I don't want to say Garrosh. But at the same time. He doesn't have two secrets left in his deck, so this is in case he has one more. Which I now know he does, as there was no rigged fair games that triggered. Also, this is good enough basically to wipe his board here. Hit, 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 hit. Play a secret that wipes. He's left with this, this on the battlefield. Which I'm fine. Because that last secret we know is rigged. That was some very interesting trading. Is he playing mobile, or what? <laughs> Straight up, that trading was fucking throwing. Kind of just left this up for no reason. When he could have popped another one, and then traded that in. This deals him... One damage. Two on draw. Or three on draw. Once he's drawn basically the next three cards of his deck, I can just slam this plus this. We know both explosive runes are gone. I think man gave up. <laughs> I think he realized he can't beat Nizoth. Just because he doesn't have enough shit. He has one Cloud Prince left, one uh, Occultist left. Or, again, he's playing mobile. Actually, you can have those cards now because I don't think they actually make a difference. Also, if I draw Cold Light Oracle, you die. I don't want to attack into Fair. Or into uh, Ruins. Or Ward, I guess. So we know he has Double Fireball, Cloud Prince, Cabal Lackey, Occultist, Rigged Fair Games in hand. Mad Scientist. That's the last six cards in his deck. Right? One, two, three, four, five. Wait, I can't count. What's the last card? One copy and another one portal. Unless it's already on the battlefield. No, that would already be on the battlefield. Oh, it's double fireball. That means he's only running one occultist. I don't think you run one of either of the other cards. My vengeance. Uh, there we go. That's how you beat a secret mage with the worst draw I've ever seen a secret mage have. I, I don't think I've ever seen a secret mage have that bad of a draw, for real. That was a really, really, really bad draw on his part. Which kind of sucks for him, but hey. Okay. Slam the rigged fair games. I know it's the last card in your hand. He's not playing it. It's a dick move, bud. I forgot that triggered like that. If the last, if he plays the last card in his hand and it's actually a secret, I'm ending my turn. So I'm 99% sure it's rigged fair games. Just play it. Just play it. Come on. Make me seem kinda smart for chat. The rigged fair games. I am 100% sure. This puts him down to one. Oh, even trigger. Fuck. I should have let it trigger. 
Whoops. Big misplay. Big misplay. Jesus Christ, I've played three games in an hour almost. That's kind of depressing, no cap. <laughs> oh, just kidding, I fucking love it. I love these slow decks. Do, do, do. Okay. Fuck, another priest? God damn it. Priest is actually such a rough matchup. Ooh, but this hand is really good. Oh, Risky Skipper is actually such a busted card with this draw. Uh, I slam Risky on, I want to say 5 with Accolade of Pain and Ethereum Rover, but that's not like max value out of him, which is the worst part. I need an Emperor Tick with this hand to just go off on 3. Armorsmith, Akko, Ethereum Rover. Uh, this is the new Baron's board, right? The board actually looks kind of sick. No cap. No fucking cap. I actually really, 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 really like this. I want to slam this right now. It's so greedy and I fucking love it. If this dies, I lose the game, so I can't actually do that. I wish I kept that other theorem Roper with this hand now. Interestingly enough, I don't know if he knows he wants to... ...heal my board. He might not know that he wants to heal my board here. Or wipe it. I played right into Breath, which is the card he keeps. Was cute into Warrior. That would show me Breath, whatever you do. No Breath one time. This Battle Rage becomes the biggest card in my deck. Of course, you fucking have it. I called it too. I fucking threw. I think I lose the game off that play. That was such a dumb play on my part. If I draw a minefield here, I slam it, by the way. You lost me three. I can't believe I fucking threw like that. That's so bad. Oh, it's also a big priest. Hmm. Unlucky. Unlucky. Super unlucky. But it was also actually probably wrong to slam this here. Because I don't have an activator if I draw Risky Skipper number two. It's also slightly worse if I draw Minefield. So I'm not guaranteed to draw three. Oh shit, no, it actually is Raza. The slam palm readings on three. Or on four. Which is wrong in that deck. This is so unlucky, man. That hurts. That actually hurts me. This draw is killing me. I think I threw this game. I straight up think I threw it. Uh, I played into breath on three. And then he had the breath. And then he cur curved that into palm readings on four into Raza on five. Fuck. I played it way too fast and way too greedy. I 
been a while since I've done that bad of a play. He's not even holding enough cards where I can actually start burning cards out of his hand, too. Playing around everything. It's not his first time queuing into a dead man's hand, is my guess. Lost that one in three. Oh, so this was just a game I was never supposed to win. Okay. That makes me feel a little less bad about this. 50-50? Also 25% chance of like an insane outcome, but that's fine. <laughs> and let's just slam Ross on curve here for him. I think that was wrong. I would have obviously my slam there, Raza, every single time. I don't know why he's waiting to try to get value out of it. His goal should have been to start poking down my armor last turn. My draw this game has been absolutely horrible. For all those wondering why I haven't played this or these yet, um, I'm saving those for later. Because I want them to get, I want to get a minimum of 6 armor off each of the dry whiskers. And right now I just want to continue pressing my hero power button. That forces them to play a couple cards in order to start dealing actual damage to me. I'm hoping that I win this brawl. If I lose it, I think I instant concede. Good. First good outcome of this game. Maybe this deck actually does need Dirty Rat. I forgot that Raza Priest is to be so much more popular right now because of the unnerfing of, uh, what's it called? Uh, Power Shield. It's such a big card for that deck that I think it instantly makes it go from what I would think of bottom tier 1, top tier 2, to best deck in format. Ran would be a nice draw here. Actually get me cards in hand. I drew every card I didn't want to draw this game. Possibly oh, so should have done that in the opposite order. Well, I burned Zephyrus here, which I mean that's still a fairly good burn, but it doesn't change the fact that I'm 99% sure I'm dead here. Damn. I'm actually glad I haven't queued into any. This is that's typically a really rough matchup for this deck. Oh, 
This is not great. This is far from great. It's a really good card to discover off palm readings. It hasn't killed me yet. Yep, that seems like the outcome there. <laughs> okay, that 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 loss was expected. That was a Rosan five Pollock on six.